Hello YouTube, this is The Bucket coming at you today with a range report on the M1895 Nagant Revolver. This was made under in 1930 at the Tula factory for the Soviet Army. This is a double action, single action revolver. It's a seven shot revolver that shoots a unique 762 Nagant round uh, where actually the projectile is actually seated within the case and that is needed because this particular firearm uh, actually indexes forward and creates a semi-gas seal which allows the firearm to not lose as much energy jumping the cylinder gap. Now, that does have the unique uh, feature of also being able to uh, thread this barrel and have a revolver that is actually suppressible, um, and that is kind of unique. These guns came out, uh, came, were actually brought into the country a few years back as military surplus, and these guns were really cavalry guns, and from the year that they were introduced in 1895, they had a very different need for revolvers back then which makes these guns uh, really more of a novelty, a fun range gun, a fun piece of history. But because of what the needs were for the cavalry at the time, they're just not really that useful for anything that we would use in the United States today. Uh, one of those things that it has is this might have the worst double action trigger ever. It's long. It stacks, I mean, I don't know, 14, 15 pounds would not be surprising to me at all. The single action is a pretty long, stiff, heavy trigger pull as well. It does shoot a very unique proprietary cartridge that's not inexpensive. It's not particularly powerful because, again, in 1895... Uh, you know, there weren't a lot of powerful cartridges out there. So it makes for these guns when they were initially imported into the country, uh, very, very inexpensive. They, they used to sell for under a hundred dollars, but this is an inexpensive way to get a unique piece of history. Uh, again, this was made in 1930. So this served in the Soviet military during world war two. And that's, you know, you're, you're going to have a hard time finding a piece of history, um, that you can shoot and have a lot of fun with for that price point. You know, you, you, you don't find them that cheap anymore, but usually you'll, you'll, you can find them for around that $400 mark. Um, you know, if you go to a gun show, you might get them a little cheaper. This one's unique because this cylinder that I have in it is a 32 ACP cylinder, which fires this round, which is still not an inexpensive round, but it's a much more easily or readily available round to be able to purchase in the United States of America because... This is something that we have in a lot of our stores. So uh, I went ahead and I shot this uh, cylinder and I shot the original uh, 762 Nagant cylinder with it as well. Um, I do want to show you some of the markings on it. Uh, from the research that I have seen is that little square with a line through it. And there's another one over here. Uh, do, 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 where did you go hiding from me? Uh, there one right there. Uh are probably signs that the, this was re-arsenaled. These little stars that you'll see kind of all throughout it are Tula markings. That's the name of the factory that produced this particular firearm. Um, those are just some of the markings that you'll see. If you look on the original uh, cylinder, you will see, and I didn't show this in the last video, but if you look up, you can see that the serial number is actually in full put on the cylinder as well. Now, does this mean this is an all matching numbers gun just because the numbers match? Not necessarily. The Russians are known for re-arsenaling or uh, force um, arsenaling, which means they would redo the serial numbers uh, when they re-arsenaled them. So uh, this is how it left the country. Is this uh, how it was originally made? Maybe, maybe not. You'll never really know. But for what it is, it's a lot of fun. So as I went to shoot it, the first five rounds that I shot were not a very impressive. Uh, the group was actually somewhat tight. I had a flyer up here. Um, it was shooting a little to the left. 
The nice thing is there is drift adjustable front uh, sight, so I can actually get that to shoot to point of aim. And with this type of grouping, now this again was with the 762 Nagant round. Um, you know, you could get this uh, moved over and you could actually hit with it. And it's a very, very light recoiling um, ammunition. So it was really a pleasure to shoot. Now, I only shot single action because I'm terrible with double action and that double action is awful. <laughs> so um, I only shot single action. I'm going to end up keeping this gun. I will uh, start to practice with it with double action. As far as the 32 ACP cylinder, it shot a little bit more accurate or I just was getting a little bit better with it when I started shooting. Um, but I think that it shot a little bit more accurately with the 32 ACP. I will tell you that there is less recoil on the 32 ACP than you're going to see on the 7.62 Nagant. Um, with me being a World War II guy, I have lots of this stuff laying around, not so much of this. So um, I think that the 32 ACP cylinder really is a, a good option. I will tell you one of the downsides, and I'll show you some video of it, is with the 32 ACP, you really do have to use the ramrod, although I had to use that with the 7.62 Nagant as well. It is a labor-intensive process, which has a benefit. It makes it so you're not, uh, you're not, you're not, um, you're not going through as much ammo. It slows you down for sure, and, uh, but I have some, uh, video of that as well. Uh, to be honest with you, if you get an opportunity to pick one of these up, I think it's a lot of fun. It's a fun gun to shoot, especially if you can come up with one that has the 32 ACP cylinder. I was blessed that I got one that came with a holster as well with the cleaning rod. It is just kind of a neat package. And you, if you can get it inexpensive at the right price, uh, you know, it could be a whole bunch of fun. So uh, if you have any comments, if you, you know uh, more specifically what that marking is, and if I got it right about that being a re-arsenal mark, go ahead and put that down in the description below. If you got somebody that's thinking about p purchasing a firearm and what's a piece of history, go ahead and share this with them. And you stay classy, YouTube. I learned a lesson. Never half-ass two things. Whole ass one thing. <laughs>